In today's video, I'm going to show you step by step how I built a self learning AI agent inside of NN that stores long term memory. It remembers past conversations from tools like Telegram and even improves itself over time by writing new memories to our database. And in case we haven't met, my name is Michele. And over the past 12 months, I've helped over 40 businesses implement these sort of AI solutions and taught over 17,000 people in the process, all starting with zero technical knowledge. So I'm going to explain exactly how it works and how to set it up. And if you stick around until the end, I'll even show you how you can get the whole system for free. Let's dive in. All right, so the first thing I want to do is actually show you the live action of how it works. On the left hand side, we have Telegram because Telegram is sort of like WhatsApp iMessage that you text the AI agent for it to actually do something. On the right hand side here, we have uh, in the middle, we have the AI agent in an attend. And right here, we have the memory database. So database just stands for a place where you put stuff, right? In this case, it's going to be a Google Sheet. And this is where we're going to store information for the AI agent to extract over time as it's giving us answers. So I'm going to say, well, I mean, I like football. My brother's named James. I'm from Italy. So let's do what sport do I like? In this case, it's talking to the memory. It extracted all the information and now it tells us that I like to play football. Need some tips to want to talk to about strategies. What the hell, man? Okay, there you go. All right, cool. And we can ask any other questions. So let's say I wanted to ask, um, I also like dogs. So let me run this first. And then let me put the message here and let me press go. This will now, this should add it to our database. You should see it right here. User also likes dogs. As you can see, it's adding information over time about the user so that it comes to a place where you can ask it any questions about yourself or whatever it is, or your, even your business or your life in general. And it has context, right? It has a database full of contextualized information of who you are, what you are, and sort of what, what it is that you're about um, and different pieces of information like this that it can use to give you answers, right? So it's much better than just a normal AI agent that has no context to you. All right, so before I get to explaining the whole AI agent in NITN step-by-step, I wanna go through and show you how this looks like in ChatGPT. You're probably asking yourself, why is this even relevant? Well, the AI agent that we're building today is an AI agent that has memory on you and that updates itself over time so that when it gives you answers, it has context. So you don't have to repeat yourself. Now, with ChatGPT, we can go to our profile. We can go to, I believe it's settings, personalization. If you scroll all the way down, you can see here that it has memory. Right now it's 89% full, which means that the memory of me that it has is 89% full and it goes to hundred and it can't add more information. And if I go to manage, I can see now that it has different pieces of information right here about me that it extracted or that it got from the conversations that I've had with it. Now, this is really, really powerful because it allows it to reference saved memories when responding and reference chat history as well. So that every single time you go to ChatGPT, you don't have to re-explain who you are, what you've done, what your business is and so on. Uh, but the only caveat to this is that it has a storage, right? And the storage isn't a crazy amount of information that you can add there, uh, but it is still good to have when you wanna ask ChatGPT any questions. So I wanted to give you this as context when we explain how the AI agent actually works on any time. Now, I drew up this diagram right here, which is the easiest way for me to explain all these concepts because it can get a bit overwhelming with all this database, storage, extract, information, X, Y, Z. But to put it in a simple way, what it is, it's an AI agent that has an input. Okay, so we have an input, which is Telegram. Hey, can you do X, Y, Z? What it does as a first step is that it retrieves the information. Okay, so we have this database right here, which is called the memory AI agent, which has different rows. And all these different rows are pieces of information that it has about us. And this is what it will use to then give us or use as context to then give us the answer, right? And so that's what this is right here. And when you hear database, it just means an air table. It means a notion. It means a Google sheet, right? Just so you can store data. Then what it does is that it sends the input plus the retrieved information. So the memory all to the AI agent. And what the AI agent does is the follows. It looks at the information that it got and it thinks through itself. Is this something? that is worth me adding to the memory database based on the input? Or is it simply just a question or a statement that we just need to answer based on the context that we got? So let's say I ask it like before, I ask it, hey, what sport do I like to play? Right? So it says user like to play sports. What it does or user like to play football? The input is what sports do I play? That's a question. It retrieves all the information from the database. Well, clearly the AI agent knows that this isn't a new piece of information. This is just a question that we can simply answer using the database that we have here. So what it does is that it goes straight here and it generates a contextualized answer. Now contextualized just means that it has context. In this case, the context is the database of memory of us. 
right? And gives it the answer. And then the output is uh, the output to the user. So in Telegram, we get an answer back saying, hey, or it just gives us the answer, right? Like just like a general chatbot. Now, there is a case where we give it information so we can say, hey, my mom's name is Jeanette or whatever it is. We give it here. Now the AI agent will have to classify whether that's worthy of putting to the memory database. If it is, then it adds the new information there, right? And it goes here. And so what it becomes is like an infinite loop that it goes like round and round and round, and it keeps getting smarter and smarter and smarter. That's why we call it a self-learning AI agent because it self-learns, right? It self-learns based on the questions and, and statements and the conversations that we give it. So in n ten right here, essentially how it works is that the first part is the input. Okay, so all these notes that you see are actually quite easy. I'll take you through exactly what it is. Uh, the first step is a telegram trigger. So this trigger right here is able for us to get messages, right? So when I run this, let me go here. Let me execute workflow, execute step, and I can pull up Telegram. And let's say I say, my business name is JM Solutions and we help companies be more efficient um, in their own workflows using AI and automations. I can press go. What this will now do, as you can see, it triggered, which means that it sent the information here for us to start the conversation. Because a chatbot or an AI agent needs to have an input Right, like what is the thing that we're actually processing? What is the information that we're processing? And then an output, which is giving us the answer back. So right here in the schema version, which is the normal person version, we can see that the text here is my business, the jam solutions, X, Y, Z. So now that we have this part, we send it two different ways. So the first way will be to extract the memory from here because you're always extracting it over and over again, right? So we have all these pieces of information that we give us context. This is the first step that we do. So we just connect it to the get rows in sheet, which means that it gets all the rows from the memory AI agent to Google Sheet right here. And by the way, to connect your Google Sheet, you have to go here, sign in with Google, that's it. And then we have to do sheet one and leave all the filters alone because in this case, we're just getting all the rows and then we're giving it to the AI agent. Now, the only thing about this is, let me just pin this. So if I pin this, I don't have to rerun the whole thing again. The only thing about this is that it gives it to us in nine items. Okay, so for those of you who are not familiar with how arrays, iterating, aggregating works, it's actually quite easy. So as you can see here, what this looks like is that this has nine rows. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? These nine rows are the ones that we get, right? So in logic, if we tell to Google Sheet, hey, can you get all the rows? It gets nine. The only problem with that is that it then processes each row individually. And that's not something that we want. We want it all to be in one place. As in we get all these pieces of information, all the rows, and it makes it into sort of like a paragraph that it then gives the AI agent as context. And so to do that, to make it into a paragraph or to make it into, we call it, we, to aggregate it, right? We use the aggregate node. So as you can see here by the diagram, we're basically getting all these nine rows and we're merging them. So we're putting all in one place to then give uh, to ChatGPT as, or to the AI agent in this case, as context. So we use the aggregate node, individual fields, because we're doing individual fields, and then the input field name will be the memory, because this is the memory. So all I did here is I just drag this across, right? And so if I execute the step, what it will now do is that it will take the nine items, because before, as you can see here, it's nine items. I can't see all of them in the same place. Or see here, we put them all together and now this will be the thing that we give to ChatGPT or to the AI agent in order for it to get context before giving us the answer, right? And that's all we do. So that's the first part. And that's what we give as the first input to the AI agent. The second input here is uh, the Telegram. So all this is, is saying, hey, we can either give you text or we can give you audio messages, right? So if it's a text, we send it here. If it's an audio message, we send it here. So the switch node, this is basically a node, so like a square, that allows us to send the automation two different ways based on something. In this case, the filter or the condition is if this variable exists, which is audio, then we send it one way to extract the audio, to make the audio into text and then send it to the AI agent. But if this variable exists, then what we do is we send it to the text way and it just simply goes straight to the AI agent. Now, how do we know what variables to use? Well, in this case, we know that whenever we do an audio, we get this variable. So let me actually test this and show you exactly what I mean, just so I'm not waffling. Uh, let me do this. There you go. I can execute the step. Why did it not work? Oh, right, because it's pinned. Let me unpin this. Let me go here, execute step. Okay, again, execute step. 
Never mind. Again, execute step. Let me go here, execute workflow. So we'll now put a new message and let me go to Telegram. Let me say, let me put it here. Let me say, um, hello, 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 hello. What this will now do is it will send the information from Telegram to the switch node. And now you can see that this is green because that was a voice message. So we know it's a voice message because this variable right here or here or here or here or here, right? These are only present if it's a voice message. And the same thing with text. This variable is only in present when it's a text message. And so what we do here is we split it out. So we're saying, hey, if it's a text, send it here. If it's an audio, send it here. Now, if it's an audio, we have to get a file because it is file and the file has a file ID. So file get and then the file ID you can find right here. File ID. To then download it, to then give it to AI to transcribe the recording. So to connect your open AI, you have to go here. You need an API key. You can simply go to platform.openai.com. Go to the dashboard. Yeah. Go to API keys. Press this button right here. Name it. So n it and test. I think I've made like 30,000 of these. Uh, and then you can copy the key and that's what you bring back to the uh, n it and. Important thing here is that this is not free. As in you do have to pay. But lucky for you, this is not expensive at all. Um, you can add $5 for credits, put your credit card here and just leave it as is. $5 can last you a long while. Obviously it depends on how much you use it, but this is like a fraction of cents when you run it. So it's not noticeable. Um, okay, once you connected your open AI, now you can transcribe the recording, an audio, and the input data field name, which is what is the thing that we're giving open AI to take as audio and turn into text? Well, that's data. Because if I test this, if I go here, so I put this, we can see that the output is data. And that is the input on the next node, data. We just drag this across and we get this. So now if I execute the step, I should be able to see hello, 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 hello. There we go. Which is the audio that we gave Telegram. And that's the first input. The second input is simply text. And we turn this to text, JSON uh, message of text, because, because this is very important, because when we send the input here and the input here, we want the output of both of these to be similar or to be the exact same named variable, right? What that means is that the output here is text. So we also want the output here to be text. So instead of message of text, because this wouldn't be present here in the audio, it would have to be something that we can manipulate here, text, right? So now we have both the inputs are basically the same variable, but it sends it different ways based on the input that we give it, whether it's a voice message, whether it's a text. Now we have the merge node, which merges. So all possible combinations. What this does is that it takes this, it takes the uh, telegram input. And now if I execute the step, so let me actually, does it work? No, it didn't work. Uh, so let me actually start from, from scratch here. So I can show you exactly what that looks like. Execute workflow. And let me unpin this. I'll go to telegram. And I can say, what is my brother's name? Right now this goes here, it extracts all the memory. So you see how nine items went through here and only one came out because it, it put them all together. And now this went this way because it was text. And in the merge node, what this did is that it merged, let's see from the name, it merged the text from Telegram and also the memory. So these two pieces of information are the ones that are going to be directly given to the AI agent to do its own thing. All right, enough of that. That was the boring part. Uh, now we get to the fun part, which is the actual AI agent. So this is the thing that will think through its answers. It will then call the, the Google Sheet tool to add memory. And uh, yeah, so the first thing we have to do is actually define the input. So the input in this case will be json.text. And this is the one right here, because this is the one from Telegram. The one from Telegram is the actual thing, the user message, because the user sent us a message. And that's the thing that we sent to this year. Now we have the system message and the system prompt. Now I'm gonna show you at the end of the video how to get the whole system for free, so don't worry. You'll have this whole prompt. But what it actually tells it is an overview, so memory handling, so some rules and stuff, response styles, the context awareness, and basically telling it, hey, you're getting this memory. Basically use the memory tool. When you have to add a new memory, don't feel forced to use memories only when they add value. And that's why we're giving AI sort of that task to, to think through, is this worth put in the memory database. If yes, put it. If not, then just answer the question and so on. Um, and let me give it a few rules. 
right? The example format and even the current date and time because AI is not good at determining date and times. So we give that as well. So again, you get the whole prompt for free at the end of the video, so don't worry. But this right here is really the sauce of the whole system because the prompt is a thing that really gives the instructions to the AI agent. So if you don't instruct it well, then you won't get the output that you want. All right, so once this is done, we added the system message and the user message. Now we have to connect the chat model. So the chat model is basically the brain. In this case, we have to use OpenAI. Again, follow the same process before to connect your OpenAI. I mean, if you connected it before, you'll have the same connection here. Uh, the model you can use 4.1 mini, that's good enough. Then we have the memory, which is able to remember the actual conversation on chat. This isn't this kind of memory. Uh, this memory is just for conversations on Telegram. And then we have our nice tool right here, which is connected to, again, the same exact database, memory AI agent. And the only action it takes is just adding more and more and more and more and more. So you basically just feed it more and more memories, uh, more and more sort of details about yourself as context. And the memory itself, so the values to send, is just a memory. And all we do here is just press this button because we're letting NITN end define what is the thing or how do we want to structure the input. For example, here, I didn't tell Telegram user also likes dogs. I told it, hey, can you also add that I like dogs, right? And so what it did is that we let AI define what goes in here and AI define that it should put it in this way. User also likes dogs. So that it's easier for, for the actual system to know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, and once this is done, we have the tool connected. And this is where we actually add the uh, the piece of information. So let me run this and I can show you exactly how this looks. Let me go here. In this case, what we can do is we can say, I also own a MBA team called Dallas Tortoise. Wish that existed. Uh, what this did is that now I called the tool. So now I should see here that it says user owns an MBA team called Dallas Tortoise, right? And that is giving us context for the future things. And that's why we call it self-learning, right? That's all it is. Self-learning just means that it learns over time. And so that's the reason why we connect this tool right here to the AI agent, given the context as well. And then finally, we connect this to the response of Telegram. So to connect your Telegram account, I didn't mention this before, but all you have to do is you have to ask the assistant on AI because uh, it has a whole process. So these right here are the steps you have to follow. For the sake of time, I'm not going to connect it now, um, but if you follow these, you'll be fine. And you just have to press this button right here. And now we can put message, which is what is the thing that we're manipulating or changing? And the operation, which is what is the action that we're taking? In this case, it's sending a message, but you can do a bunch of stuff. And then the chat ID is the ID of the chat, right? <laughs> Logically, that's what it is. But the way that Telegram works is that every conversation that you have has an ID attached to it. Right? And so if we get an input from this ID, then we have to give the output to the ID. So logically, if we get an input from this ID, then we have to give back the output to that ID because then it's in the same conversation. And then the text will be the json.output, which is the one here. So I just drag this across. So you can see here it says, got it, bro. I just added you uh, that you own an NBA team called Dallas Tortoise. Anything else you want to add or chat about? What the hell, man? There you go. Um, and everything else keep the same. So now when we get the output, this is the message that we come back to Telegram uh, to do its own thing. And now you got to see exactly how it works, but this is a very simplistic version of a self-learning agent. I mean, we're using Google Sheets. Typically you wouldn't use Google Sheets. You maybe have an Airtable or even a RAG database, right? To store these different pieces of information. Uh, but you got to see the, the theory, right? The theory behind it, how it actually works, how it functions. So now you can apply this to any kind of other database tool to store information and have that retrieve it every single time that it gives you answers. All right, and if you want the full system for free so you can import it into your own Enit and account, make sure to go to my free school community, links down below, uh, to the classroom section, you can go to the templates vault, and then you will see that it will have a button called the download Enit and automation blueprint. Press this, import it into your own account, and if you have no clue how to do that, no worries at all. You can also watch this tutorial right here, importing blueprint to Enit and. And also, if you apply and you get in, you also get access to the AI Automations 101 course, which is a very, very comprehensive guide that takes a real beginner in AI automation to someone who's actually able to build automations for themselves for other businesses. The only disclaimer here is that not everybody gets in. As you can see, we have about 1,000 people in the waiting list. Uh, so please 
put some thoughts into your answers before you reply, and I'll see you on the inside. And if you enjoyed this video, but you're still unsure as to how AI agents actually work, then make sure to check out this video on the screen where I show you everything, all the fundamentals that you have to know about AI agents within any With that being said, I hope you found value from this video and I'll see you in the next one.